I'm guessing that quite a lot of you play fretted bass and some of you might have tried a fretless and are not sure how to play that differently than a fretted bass. So I'm going to show you three techniques to get you started on the fretless. Make sure you subscribe to Greg's Bass Shed here on YouTube. I bring out a new video every Friday and also get the free PDF by clicking the link in the description. First of all, I'll give you a few basics for those who are just starting on the fretless. Obviously, we haven't got any frets on a fretless bass, um, but some of them are lined, like this bass, and if they are lined, then you play over the lines, so you play on top of the lines. And you have to play with as good a left-hand technique as possible, so you're accurate with the pitch. If your fretless isn't lined, then you can use the dots here to give you a rough idea, but ultimately you've got to use your ear, and lots of practice on the fretless will get you used to this. I haven't done this myself, but some excellent fretless players suggest practicing in the dark, so this will really help um, develop your ear, so you can try that out. Before I show you these three vital techniques, I just want to put it out there that for the majority of the time you'll be playing the fretless the same way as you play a fretted bass but it just gives you a different sound um, just by the fact that it hasn't got fret so but I'm going to show you these techniques and these have got to be used subtly so you're just not going to put slides everywhere all over the place for example um, so we, they've got to be used in a subtle way but there are distinct ways to play the fretless, um, small changes that you can make to your technique which will help. The first technique I'm going to show you is to use small slides up to or down to the note. So you can use say a couple of frets below or so it's quite a nice effect. Don't do massive, well you can sometimes do a big slide but don't do a really big slide, it just is a bit over the top. You'll hear fretless players doing these slides all the time, and a great example that you might all know is from New York Minute by Dom Henley. Um, the Eagles covered this song as well, but the original was played by Pino. So we have... So we've got this slide here. You can try that on your bass. Um, and by the way, I've written out um, some of these bass lines on a PDF which you can get below in the description. Now this leads nicely onto the second technique, which is vibrato, um, and sometimes called the moi sound. Um, so we have that on the third note, actually, of this intro. So if I just played that straight, and with vibrato, and you get vibrato by rocking your hand gently left and right. So, you don't have to do it that much, but just a subtle rocking of your fingers. You're kind of moving it from left to right. Now I find that when I'm playing lyrical fretless lines that I use um, the pads of my fingers more, um, these bit, rather than the tips, because I feel I get a full of sound and I've got more control with the vibrato. So you can see my fingers um, quite flat there. If we play this vibrato on the lower strings, we get that classic growl that people associate with the fretless. So we have a bit of a natural growl if we just hold the note down anyway. You can hear that, but if we can emphasize that a bit with our vibrato. And I find again that with the right hand, I play a bit more with the pads of the fingers to get that sound. Um, you just get, again, you get a fuller sound, um, a richer sound. And the way you kind of definitely do a rest stroke, it adds to the effect. Rather than... So it's really a combination of both using the, the, the light vibrato in the left hand and using the pads of the fingers in the right hand.
I prefer round ones. I think you get a better growl. Well, I can certainly on my fretless basses. Um, a lot of people do use flat wounds, but I also prefer the more bouncy sound you get on the fretless with the round wounds. But experiment with yourself because you'll probably have a preference. Um, both of them sound great. They just give a slightly different sound. So the third technique I'm going to talk about is using the fifths and octaves above the note, above the root note. And these sound great when you combine them with slides. They give a kind of chorus effect between the two notes and make a much fuller bass line. Possibly my favourite fretless player is a guy called John Giblin. He's a British um, bass player. Uh, not many people have heard of him really. He hasn't really got the kind of um, the fame I think that he deserves. The bass line that I was messing around with on the intro that's from the intro of a song called Looking On. Um, that's from a John Martin album called Grace and Danger, and John Giblin plays on that. If you don't know Grace and Danger, it's such a fantastic album. Um, the fretless bass features throughout the album, and the way it's mixed, you can really hear um, the bass properly. It's almost like a bass concerto, the album. And um, you can hear every little nuance and every note, and it's, it's just a brilliant album. Um, one year when I was on tour in Germany, uh, it was winter, I kind of just locked myself away in the hotel room. Um, um, and just played this album and really, really learnt his um, fretless playing from that. And I'd, I'd recommend um, that you really listen to the album yourself. Um, it would definitely give you lots and lots of um, ideas of what to play on the fretless bass. A good track to hear John Giblin playing these fifths and octave idea um, is the track Baby Please Come Home from the Grace and Danger album. So have a listen to that. A good place to use these octaves are, for example, if you're going from E down to D, Play the octave afterwards, the high octave, and slide down to so. like that, or you could do it with a fifth. It gives a really full sound, or you can do it the other way. So these are three vital fretless techniques that I suggest you take away and play around with and try to incorporate them into your fretless playing. And your homework for today is definitely to listen to John Giblin on the Grace and Danger album. I've written out the intro for New York Minute and I've sketched out a bit of that intro as well. Um, so I've put that on a um, PDF and there is a tab version as well if you prefer tab. You can get that by clicking the link in the description below this video. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed the lesson and remember to subscribe to me here on YouTube and to check out all the other videos. And also you might want to head over to gregspaceshed.com to see all the other base resources that you can get. This is Greg from Greg Space Shed. See you in the next video.